which is critical for um, some of the more challenging uh, operative laparoscopy cases that I do, particularly endometriosis. You want really good exposure to the pelvic side wall um, and posterior compartment. Um, find that really useful in that space. But my name's Andrew Murray and I'm a gynaecologist and fertility specialist. I've uh, been practicing for over 20 years now and um, my practice is largely uh, geared around patients trying to get pregnant but a large proportion of those patients will have coexisting gynae pathology and so I look after them for those um, issues as well. Uh, predominantly endometriosis but also tubal surgery, um, pain, fibroids. Many of my patients of course complete their family and go on to require hysterectomy so it's quite a nice part of my role that I get to look after them through that whole life journey. So um, during the course of my career I've um, tried a variety of different uterine manipulators and I think the evolution of the devices has been really positive. Um, uh, the reason I like the Clearview in particular is that um, it does provide excellent antiversion, exposure of the posterior compartment, um, uh, pelvic sidewall critical to, to do this kind of you know, some of the more complicated cases safely. You want to know where the ureter is and other structures. Uh, I have trialled it for laparoscopic hysterectomy as well. Um, the ability to put a, a cup on the end there for um, access into the uh, vaginal fornices is also helpful as well. And of course, the ability to provide uh, to perform tubal studies is, is helpful as well. Sure. I think the Clearview is a really good device. I would recommend it to any gynaecologist that is wanting to have the option of not only diagnostic laparoscopy but moving during the same procedure into the operative space where they might be having to deal with uh, coexisting disease, things like endometriosis, anything that you want good exposure um, of the pelvic um, contents. So yeah, I, th I think it's a, a great device. Um, in terms of using the device, familiarising yourself with how it moves before you put it into the patient I think is a helpful um, tip. Um, I mean, I think the key thing there is understanding which way the handle turns, uh, whether it antiverts or retroverts the, the uterus. It's good to understand that mechanism before you um, uh, get your hands on the device. I, I think the other key thing is also understanding which port is which. If, particularly if you're going to put some dye through, you want to know that it's the one not attached to the balloon. Um, a, a little pro tip that I have found from time to time, if I'm doing dye studies and the balloon's been inflated and you've put dye through but it doesn't seem to go through the fallopian tubes, um, deflating the balloon slightly and just pro pulling the clear view back a little so that the balloon is snug up against the internal os um, by deflating the balloon slightly, I think sometimes it part, partly occludes the internal os where the tubes join, and so I've found that that then results in the dye going through the tubes um, satisfactorily. Well, I think uh, one question that I, I'm often asked is, hey, this device, you know, d d does it justify its cost? Um, because it does cost extra for the um, for the device to be used and uh, my argument's always been well by getting good exposure you're actually saving operating time and if having good exposure and a good view saves you a quarter of an hour, half an hour or more that's actually going to more than pay for itself.